Since a number of people have asked these days what I use for my home lab, particularly in the videos I do, I decided to cover that subject very briefly. Now, I don't have anything special at home. In fact, if anything, I would say it's a very, very uh, basic system. Now, the system itself was built a few years back, so don't criticize the specs too much, please. And keep in mind that I bought it basically around a costing thing. So whilst, yes, an Intel would have been better, an Intel with four cores would have been the only viable option cost-wise, and I would have lacked the eight cores that I used primarily for virtual machines. I'd rather shell out the cash, as I did at the time, on the 16 gig of RAM, which lets me run more VMs. Again, equally graphics card, nothing special, a GTX 750 for the odd occasional light gaming, maybe some indie gaming, but realistically not needed for the video production I do. The other part of this is to go through the actual specifications that I use within VirtualBox. So as you can see, I've got a lab and a NAT network address. Now the NATed network is kind of the out the box one, so nothing special there per se. And the lab one is one that I've added myself. Now again, nothing particularly special except for the DHCP is turned off. Now the reason for that is that I like to run the DHCP inside of my network. What this means is I have the ability to control it using my DHCP server within that uh, LAN. And that lets me do things like set up the DNS and other parts so that I don't need to manually specify always the DNS. And as you can see, VirtualBox has a number of options available as to how you can do networks. I just generally tend to prefer to use my own NATed network and then go from there. Some people use bridged, but again, then you're back into the concept of manually setting DNS. Unless you configure your wireless to point to your own DNS in a virtual machine, which then means you have potentially issues with other machines on your network if your VM is switched off because then you have no DNS running. Overall, I consider that to be a bit of an overhead and much easier to just simply go with a NATed network for testing purposes. So, with that said, there are equally some limitations with using a NATed network. Um, one of which is that you need the port forwarding if you want your host machine to talk to any of the VMs. So, yeah, it, it, there are swings and roundabouts from this point of view that there are some benefits and some lack of benefits, shall we say. But overall, I find that running a VM with the network address translation and then using one VM within that network to act as the AD, DHCP, and DNS, more than viable. So as an example, let's run over to two servers that I have within my network, just to show that they are set up on the lab network. And we're gonna fire them up. So this will be my uh, AD server and one of my lab servers that is connected to the AD domain. So you can see here that they are configured both to the lab network and in fact all the machines within this group are configured to the lab network. Now since that's running on a private range it will not be visible to the outside world or anything else but we could configure port forwarding if we ever needed to and yeah that's an entirely new conversation by itself. So let's in the meantime just take these machines out of the standby state that they're in and show you what they actually look like both DNS wise and IP wise. So as you can see, we're happily bringing machine out. And this is our AD server, which is also acting as our DNS server and DHCP server. So while we wait for the console to merrily fire up, there we go, um, we'll be able to see what IP addresses are currently assigned to machines within the network. Now, since it's been off for two, three days, and I think the address range said something like an eight hour refresh time, we shouldn't see anything in the range currently active. Sure enough, nothing there. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you some other stuff in a minute. I'm just gonna go fire up the other machine so that we can get at least one machine on the network. Now, this configuration is simple for me because having the DHCP within the network means that when an IP address is handed out, all the correct DNS settings are handed out, which then means adding to a domain becomes easy because we're able to resolve the host name of the domain instantly. That's the main reason I use this as my configuration preference. Now, like I said, you could do this using bridge and have your network have maybe the secondary or the primary as the DNS. You could also do it using host files and just have each one of your VMs have a host file that points to the correct uh, domain name. Um, but hey, you know, again, th this is all for me 
more configuration work and when I'm setting up a lab I want it to work as quickly and easily as possible. Now we've renewed the IP address as you can see and we can see that we're connected so let's jump back to our AD controller and I'll look more Windows updates isn't that hilarious. Anyway we do a quick refresh and we can see that the machine has grabbed an IP and therefore has now all of the network configuration that I would expect to see. So its preferences are going to be the gateway settings, the DNS and everything else that was added to the scope. Now you can use any range you want when you're using your lab but I preferably would say if you want to use Google and other services and generally internet within your lab uh, don't pick a public range. Use one of the network address translation uh, ranges. So the uh, 10.0 range or the 192.168 range or the, as I do, the 172.16 range. And that basically gives you the full ability to run several thousand VMs should you have the space to do so. Um, frankly, I don't think you're going to have that many VMs before you run out of disk space. Now if you like this video give us a thumbs up, if you didn't you know what to do and as always subscribe for more content.